Build 1,500 miles of road in eight months through the Alaskan Canadian wilderness? You're kidding, right? But that is exactly what happened. In response to the attack on Pearl Harbor, President Roosevelt authorized the construction of a road to Alaska. The effective defense of Alaska is of paramount importance to the defense of the continent. Alaska is most exposed to an attempt by the enemy to establish a foothold in North America. The following year, after basic training in construction engineering, 11,000 men shipped north. More than a third came from three all-black regiments, the 93rd, the 95th, and the 97th Engineers. Black soldiers were rarely sent into combat, but rather were put into labor battalions at lower pay. The Alaska assignment was an unprecedented opportunity for pay and benefits equal to those of white soldiers. And black and white units were to work on the same project. That was practically unheard of. Work commenced in the winter of 1942, in five directions at once, paired units working independently. Conditions in the North were always harsh, and this was the coldest winter on record. Lord, it was bitter cold. If you touch anything metal with your bare hands, you couldn't tear your skin loose. Clifton Monk. Leather would freeze. We'd take galoshes, rubber galoshes, we called them Arctics, and we'd wear three full pairs of socks. We'd double up on pants. Corporal Donald Nolan. For months on end, I couldn't get a real night's sleep. I had nightmares I was freezing to death. Unidentified soldier. Summer wasn't much better. Trucks sank in melting permafrost, and giant mosquitoes dive-bombed in droves. The black engineers faced other challenges. General Simon Bolivar Buckner, head of the Alaska Defense, ordered the black soldiers confined to camp so they wouldn't socialize with locals. Even more frustrating, despite the superior training and experience of the 95th black engineers, their heavy equipment had been given to a less qualified unit. As a crowning blow, the black engineers were then supposed to improve the safety and durability of a road built by that same white unit. To build morale, their commander gave them a challenge. Build a bridge over the fast-moving, 300-foot-wide Sikany Chief River. This is going to be difficult. Take at least five days, maybe more. Are you up for it, men? Piece of cake. Oh, bet my paycheck we can do it in four. Yeah, man. Sure we can do it. Using only hand tools, they prepared the beams and plunged chest deep into the freezing water to set the trestles. Working round the clock, they finished ahead of schedule. Work on the highway continued. Eight months after construction started, the road was complete. Many in the military had doubted African-American engineers were up to the job. I took a part in building what was considered one of the greatest engineering projects during the last century. Some people said it was sucking only to the Panama Canal. And we did it in record time before they said we could do it. It's taken 63 years for those people to realize that they had the best crew of men that they could have selected. After the highway's completion, many of the black engineers were sent to active duty in Europe and the South Pacific, where they again performed superbly, negating the argument that African Americans were unfit for battle. Finally, in 1948, after pressure from leaders and veterans in the African American community, President Truman desegregated the armed forces, bringing greater equality to the military. But racial discrimination was still very much alive in the rest of America. 